I played 100 days of Stardew Valley on easy mode. First things first, what exactly is easy mode? You start out with both backpack upgrades, fully upgraded tools and a tractor. Oh, and Elliot's pencil for some reason. Early game becomes a complete cakewalk with these changes. Fishing, the mines, farming, all of these things become so much easier. So, we need to set some difficult goals, and a lot of them. The following are what I want to achieve during these 100 days. Complete the shipping collection, complete the fishing collection, complete the museum collection, build all four obelisks on the farm, build a gold clock on the farm, complete all of the monster eradication goals, reach maximum hearts with every villager, reach level 10 in every skill, find all star drops, fully upgrade the house, earn a total of 50 million gold, and finally, use only Elliot's pencil as a weapon until we make it to the Skull Caverns. So, with all of that out of the way, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's get started with the month of spring. On the first day of this adventure, I used a tractor to completely clear up my farm. If I need to, I can sell all of the wooden stone I collected here for money, but at the very least it gives me a ton of space to plant all the seeds I buy this month. Next, I make a chest and put the items I collected into it. Now, it is time for some hijinks. It is time to go to the mines on day one. I start making my way to the mountain area when I realize I forgot to bring a chair. This will not do. A short time later, I return with my chair. I'll leave a link in the description of this video that explains what I'm about to do in detail. But the short version is, I swing my scythe to force my character off screen. I then walk to the quarry area, then to the top of it, then finally to the ravine beside it. I then use a chair to get up onto the grassy area and we're done. We're now in the mines on day one. Not too shabby. I spend the rest of the day in the mines. The tractor makes it a cakewalk and I get to floor 28 before I pass out. We also reach level 3 in mining, level 4 in foraging and level 1 in combat today. On the morning of day 2, I decide to throw some of the items I collected yesterday into my shipping bin. I want to get to the bottom of the mines before day 5 and spend all of day 3 fishing, so I go all in on the mines today. The entirety of day 2 is spent in there, where I make it past level 80 before I pass out. I also collected a good few things we need for the community center, so today was an exquisite day. On day 3, I collect some daffodils and head to Georgia Mart to buy one green bean, potato and cauliflower seed, as well as 147 parsnip seeds. I spend some time fishing by Penny's trailer where I fail to catch a catfish, then do some foraging at the beach, then spend the rest of the day fishing there. My goal today was to level up my fishing skills so we can catch the catfish and the eel on the next rainy day. Thanks to my iridium rod and the fishing bubbles, I managed to do exactly this. On day 4, I use my tractor to water all my parsnips, then I put all of the community center items I have into a chest. I completely annihilate the local tree population in the forest in order to get some more foraging XP. And by annihilate, I mean I cut down every single tree I could find. Next up is the mines, where I collect the star drop on floor 100. I partake in a little dilly-dallying on floor 119 before I finally go down to floor 120, completing the mines and receiving the skull key. I celebrate my victory by passing out in the mines. On day 5, I receive a letter letting me know the mines are open and I can now complete them. What about this? Championship manager, complete it mate. You can't complete it. We receive tremendous luck as the travelling cart is selling red cabbage seeds. I make my way to the secret woods where I catch a moral, no I don't, I collect the moral, and catch a wood skip, both of which are needed for the community centre. I sell some forage to Pierre and most of my fish to William, then buy three salads from Gus and a rare seed from the travelling cart. I give a salad to Leah, then surprisingly I manage to catch an eel. This shouldn't be surprising because I have the iridium rod, but my experience when it comes to successfully catching fish is a lot like the job I had selling trampolines. Ups and downs. I'm sorry. I then catch a catfish and a bream before spending the rest of the day fishing at the river by Leah's house. On the morning of day 6, I throw all of the items I don't need into my shipping bin. I spend about half of the day in the mines to increase my mining level and get more copper ore. I then try to give Abigail an amethyst, but for some reason she won't take it. Feeling dejected, I head to the saloon and give Leah a salad. She accepts the salad gracefully. Gratefully? Graciously? She accepts the salad, and I do some fishing beside Penny's trailer to end the day. I am... Delighted to announce that we reached level 7 in mining and earned just over 5,500 gold today. On day 7, I learn how to make a stir-fry, then use my tractor to harvest all of the parsnips that have grown. 
I then used my tractor to water three crops for no reason other than I felt incredibly lazy. I buy a coconut, shrimp, cactus fruit and strange bun from the traveling cart, watch the community center cutscene and give a gift to Lewis for his birthday. I sell my parsnips to Pierre, buy 364 parsnip seeds, read the scroll in the community center and return to my farm to plant all of the seeds I bought. I donate all of the gems and artifacts I can to the museum, then head to Clint's. I wanted to open some geodes, but I forgot I spent all of my money on parsnip seeds. I am broke. I give a salad to Leah, who says the fish she bought smelled fishy. Get it, because it's a fish and it smells fishy. Look, Leah, leave the comedy to me, alright? The rest of the day is spent fishing at the mountain. On day 8, I make a few scarecrows and put them beside my parsnips to keep them safey wafy I, 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 <laughs> I ask Robin to... I ask Robin to build a silo on my farm, buy a tulip, kale and blue jazz seed from Pierre and visit the wizard where I learn how to speak Junimo. Now that we have access to the community center, I can see what we need for the first room and we are in a good spot. I head to the community center and complete the spring foraging bundle, the exotic foraging bundle and the construction bundle and donate two of the four items needed for the winter foraging bundle. But I'm not done. I complete the crap up bundle, donate some fish for other bundles and fully complete the boiler room. I head to Piers once again and buy a green bean, potato and cauliflower seed. I already did this but I realized I need more so I can ship them as well as donate them to the community center. I plant these three seeds as well as the 30 spring seeds I received for completing the spring forage bundle, put three crab pots by William shop and repair the broken bridge. I do some foraging then hand out some gifts to end this delightful day. Also the Juno was repaired the minecarts during the night. That is lovely. On day 9, I harvest a single potato, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines. Yeah, that's it. It's raining on day 11, so I make the most of it and spend the entire day fishing. Once again, that is all. Day 11 is the single most important day so far. Time is of the essence. I harvest all of my parsnips, do some foraging and head to the mines. I make my way from floor 80 to floor 108, collecting all of the ore and valuable items as fast as I can. I leave the mines just before 1pm and head to piers where I sell all of my parsnips and forage items. Then I head to Clint's and sell everything I collected in the mines as well as the gold, iron and copper bars I had at this point. Now we have 42,600 gold. We could use this gold to buy 426 strawberry seeds at the egg festival, but I've got a different idea. I head to the community center and use pretty much all of my gold to complete the vault bundle. My plan is to head to the skull cavern tomorrow and collect as many ores and gems as I possibly can. At the end of the day I'll throw them all into my shipping bin and spend all of the money I make from it on strawberry seeds. Depending on how the skull cavern run goes tomorrow, this could either be the best or the worst idea I've ever had. On day 12 I finally get the option to adopt a dog. I decide to call it Shenanigans. I collect some forage and sell it to Pierre, wait for Pamela to get to the bus stop and finally make it to the desert. As soon as I get into the skull cavern, I whip out my tractor and get to work. Level 7 ends up being a monster only floor, but luckily we're not restricted to using Elliot's pencil because we've made it to the skull caverns. I made it to level 50 by around 3pm. This is good, but I need to be quicker if I want to get to the floors filled with iridium ore. I made it to floor 100 at 7pm, found a prismatic shard on floor 105, and eventually made it to floor 150. At this point I've collected over 350 iridium ore and it's getting really late so I use a farm warp totem to get back to the farm. I put almost all of the items I collected today into my shipping bin and head to sleep. Not only did I reach level 10 in mining, but I also earned over 76,000 gold from that skull cavern run. On day 13, Mr. QI challenges us to make it to at least level 25 in the Skull Cavern. He clearly is not aware of the absolute tomfoolery I partook in yesterday. At the Egg Festival, I buy a plush bunny, that is the most important purchase yet, and 750 strawberry seeds. I was feeling very oozy at this point, which gave me all the motivation I needed to dominate in the egg hunt and receive a delicious straw hat. Before the day ends, I plant and water all of the strawberry seeds I bought. On day 14, Mr. QI sends us 10,000 gold for completing the quest he gave us after we completed the quest he was going to give us. Does that make sense? I, th I think it does. I harvest a couple of crops that have grown, ask Robin to build a coop on my farm, then head to the desert where I trade my prismatic shard for the galaxy sword. 
I spent the rest of the day in the Skull Cavern before warping home and once again putting most of the items I collected into my shipping bin. On day 15, I begin my day with a moment of peace. It is during this moment of peace that I realize there is one crop I forgot to grow. That is complete malarkey and I will not tolerate it. I harvest the spring forage that has grown and make 60 spring seeds. Also, rainy days in Stardew Valley absolutely destroy the frame rate of my footage, so I apologize for the quality of the video right now. I donate a couple of items to the community center, then head to the desert and meet Sandy for the first time. Also, for the first time in this playthrough, I buy rhubarb seeds. 999 of them, to be exact. I head back to my farm and plant all of them. This is what my farm looks like right now. It's going to be like this for the rest of spring, but I promise it will look better around the end of summer, maybe the start of fall. I've got a bit of money left, so I go to the saloon and buy some food to give as gifts and some cooking recipes. I head to piers and buy five parsnip seeds for shipping purposes. Then I decide to bring the Christmas spirit to the town of Pelican and hand out gifts to the villagers in the saloon. I plant my five parsnip seeds to end the day. On day 16, I decide it's time to upgrade our smelting process. I make like 20 furnaces, then realize I don't have any ores because I sold all of them. This leads to an impromptu skull cavern run. For some reason I took this run very seriously. As I made my way through the cavern, I realized I was doing something I hadn't done in a long time. I was panicking. My hands were shaking. My left leg was bouncing up and down. My heart was beating at a concerning rate as it should be. I might be playing on easy mode, but that does not mean I should coast along and take it easy the whole time. I might be under pressure, but I love pressure because pressure makes diamonds. And I am not a diamond, actually. That's a bit too braggadocious for me. Uh, anyway, that's it for day 16. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. On day 17, I have calmed down. I get the ball rolling on her smelting. Then I realize I have the automate mod installed and there's no reason for me to manually put the ores into the furnaces. If you don't know what the automate mod does, I've drawn a simple diagram explaining it. The ores and coal get put into a chest. The chest puts the ores and coal into a furnace. The furnace puts the bar into the chest. I give Pamela a prismatic shard as I thank you for being my personal bus driver, then give prismatic shards to the carpenter slash scientist family simply because I like their vibes. Once again, the rest of the day is spent in the Skull Cavern. On day 18, I ask Robin to upgrade the coop on my farm. I donate some items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open a ton of geodes, donate more items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open... E I'm not doing all that again. Ask Clint to crack open even more geodes and donate even more items to the museum. On day 19, I buy a crystal fruit and a poppy from the traveling cart. It turns out I already donated a crystal fruit to the community center, but Asher look it. Leah won't let me into her house, so I do the logical thing and head to the Skull Caverns. But I'm not selfish. I make sure to leave early so I have enough time to give gifts to the villagers. On day 20, I make 24 tappers. I put four of them on the oak trees at the bus stop, then plant 24 tree saplings on my farm. I ask Robin to build a shed on my farm and give a gift to Oplinus Prime. No, no, that doesn't work. I don't like that one. I'm sorry. I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing to work on increasing my fishing skill. On day 9 plus 10, do you get it? 21? Ah, uh, my jokes are going downhill. I collect the fruit in my back cave and harvest all of my strawberries. I buy a duck feather, garlic, pufferfish, rare seed, and coffee bean from the traveling cart. I then put two scarecrows beside my coffee bean to keep it safe, buy 25 of each spring seed from Pierre just in case, and buy 25 of each cooking product. I patiently wait for Gustavo to get to the counter and buy 30 salads, the triple shot espresso recipe, and a Mackey roll. I donate some items to the bounty board, artisan, and fishing bundles, then head to Clint's to crack open some geodes. I donate the gems from these geodes to the museum, and I must say, our museum is looking exquisite right now. On day 22, I harvest my spring forage and make 160 spring seeds. I then use the forage I had in chests to make an extra 50 spring seeds. Then I decide it's time to automate my crab pots. I buy 280 bait and 25 crab pots and set them up beside a chest. I head to Robbins and ask her to upgrade my shed, trade omni geodes for 30 artifact troves in the desert, and get Clint to open them. I got two golden pumpkins and a treasure chest out of these. That is pretty neat. 
I lost the footage of me donating the artifacts to the museum, so here's all the rewards I received for everything I've donated so far. I pick up all my furnaces and put them in my new shed. I'll probably end up rearranging them at some point, so don't worry about how I've kind of put them down a bit haphazardly. Gunther visits us on day 23 and gives us the key to the sewers as a reward for donating 60 items to the museum. I decide to spend the day in the mines working on the monster eradication goals. On day 24, it's time for the flower festival. I buy a rare crow and the tub of flowers recipe. I then walk right past Leah before realizing what I've done and go back to her. I ask her to dance and she says yes. I mean, I'm not really surprised by that though. I've got Riz. They call me the Rizzly Bear. The Rizzard of Oz. The R- ah, you get the point. I am embarrassed to admit that on day 25, an absolute scallywag moment occurred. I just finished watering all of my crops when I realized that my strawberry seeds had grown. I then realized that this wasn't actually a scallywag moment because I would have needed to water the strawberry seeds again anyway. I then realized that that realization was in fact the second scallywag moment as it is too late in spring for the strawberry seeds to grow, again before the end of the month. This whole thing is a bit confusing now, so I'll just say it was a scallywag moment. I head to Piers where I play the Prairie King with Abigail. As somebody who has achieved 100% perfection in both GTA Vice City and San Andreas, this was an absolute walk in the park for me. I steamroll the enemies in this game with complete, absolute proficiency. I then sell my strawberries to Pier and buy two crafting recipes and a star drop from Krobus. The star drop reminds me of money. The name of my farmer is Georgia Joker. Yeah, I was going to go in a completely different direction with this playthrough initially. The original plan was to complete the Georgia route as fast as possible, but I had a change of heart, so here we are. I head to Robbins and ask her to upgrade my coop for the final time, make a seed maker and put my garlic seed into it, and receive a single garlic seed in return. I cannot stress how disappointed I am by this. It's too late in spring to plant that seed, so now we have to wait until we unlock the greenhouse to plant it. The rest of day 25 as well as day 26 is spent collecting copper in the mine so I can make more furnaces. On day 27 I collect the oak resin from the trees at the bus stop, catch a flounder and a halibut at the ocean and watch a cutscene with Penny and George. George is mad at Penny for helping him, but realises he is in the wrong and apologises to Penny. George is a sigma. We love a person who can own up to their mistakes and apologise for them. I head to Robbins where Demetrius tells me to stay away from his daughter. I, I'm, I'm literally just here to buy a barn so I can raise some animals and give them the life they deserve. I buy all of the crafting recipes Robin has for sale, then spend the entire rest of the day fishing to get to fishing level 9. It is the final day of spring, and as I do some calculations in my head, I realise that I have left quite a lot of things until the last minute. Like, a lot. It would take too long for me to go through them slowly, so I'm going to do a bit of a quick fire round for today. Ready? And not yet. I'm waiting for the hard drums to kick in in this song that's playing right now, so just give it a moment. Alright, let's go. I harvest all of the rhubarb that has grown, put 25 of them in a chest just in case I need them in the future, put one of them into my shipping bin, sell the rhubarb and a couple of green beans to Pierre, donate a ghost fish to community center, buy a lead bobber, 200 bait and 5 trout soups from Willy, collect a blackberry from a bat cave, head to the desert and trade omni geodes for 24 artifact troves and a desert warp totem, eat a trout soup, catch a scorpion carp and a sandfish, Crack open some artifact troves at Clint's, trash the items I don't need, crack open more geodes, rinse and repeat, donate everything I can to the museum, collect my new rewards, put most of my inventory into a chest, catch the legend fish just in the nick of time, watch a cutscene where Shane and I talk about how life is strange, get distracted by a treasure chest while trying to catch the mutant carp, but still manage to catch the mutant carp, give a trout suit to Leah, finish the specialty fish bundle, donate a blackberry to the fall foraging bundle and make it into bed with seconds to spare. And that's it for the month of spring. Day 29 is the first day of summer. We say goodbye to the remnants of our spring crops, then head to Piers to purchase 25 of each summer crop and one of each fruit tree sapling. I head to Marnie's because I want to buy some animals for my coop, but she isn't there. Give me what I want. Give me what I want! I do have good news though. Our coffee bean is still alive and well thanks to his three security guards. I hereby dub these three scarecrows as Howdy, Dowdy and Gabriel. I collect some maple syrup from the trees at the bus stop, then head to Sandy's shop in the desert where I buy over 700 starfruit seeds. 
Was it wise of me to spend all of my money on the first day of summer? Probably not. Will I regret this choice in the near future? Probably. Do I care? Of course not. I partake in professional tomfoolery. Making silly choices is my specialty. After planting all of the crops I bought, I plant my fruit tree saplings. They won't produce fruit until fall, but I am a tremendously patient person. Right, okay, play the next bit of footage. What are you waiting for, man? The next order of business is to catch a pike. It took quite a while for a pike to even show up. In fact, I was starting to think that GTA 6 would be released before I was even given the chance to catch the fish. The rest of the day is spent fishing at the beach. On the morning of day 30, I collect some forage at the bus stop, then spend some time fishing at the beach for summer fish. I am unsure if I needed planning permission to set up my crab pots outside Leah's home, but I did it anyway. I am whimsical in nature. I dabble in malarkey. I, 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 I don't know what I'm saying. The rest of the day is spent fishing here. On day 31, I say hello to Howdy, Dowdy and Gabriel and collect some coffee beans. I then make quite a few lightning rods because we're going to need battery packs at some point. It's better to get them now rather than end up in a situation where I need them but don't have them. Next up, Calico Desert. Ooh, never mind. Was it wise of me to spend all of my money on the first day of summer? Probably not. Will I regret this choice in the near future? Probably. I decide to take 40 iridium bars and sell them to Clinty Poo. <laughs> sorry. Clinty Poo for 60,000 gold. I head to... <laughs> Actually, I'm not sorry. That was funny. I head to Robbins and ask her to build a second shed on my farm. Then I head to Marnie's where I finally buy some animals. Please welcome hijinks, hijinks, malarkey, and tomfoolery, the chickens, to the farm. Up next, we've got Duck, Kenny, Fernando, and Howitzer the Geese. Finally, we have Venom, Sally, Battle Pass, and Puffle the Rabbits. I also buy a ton of hay. I hope you're ready for more random names, because Grimsy, Pubert, Binny, and Chewy the Cows will also be joining the family. I head to the community center and donate some items to the fishing, bounty board, and foraging bundles, receiving 30 summer seeds for completing the summer foraging bundle. I head home and make some more summer seeds, then plant them all to end the day. On day 32, I do some foraging at the beach, then spend the rest of the day fishing there. Yeah, I still haven't caught all the summer beach fish, so I really want to get them out of the way right now. I'm sorry for this being a short day. On day 33, I... <laughs> That's my real accent, by the way. I've been faking my voice this entire time. On day 33, I finally clean up my storage situation. I spend pretty much the entire day going back and forth between my chest and the shed, trying to make a tidy storage area. At around 11pm, I take a look at what I've spent the last 10 minutes of my life doing. I hate it. It looks disgusting. I, like, I can't believe I wasted so much time doing all of that. Like, it'll do for now, but I'm going to have to redo it all pretty soon. I hate the way it looks. It's disgusting. On day 34, I harvest the peppers and wheat that I've grown, then make various machines such as a keg and a preserves jar. The reason for this is I need to ship things like jam, wine and juice, so it's better to get them out of the way now. I collect some oak resin and some summer forge at the bus stop, then spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns. Also, days 35, 36, 37 and 38 were all spent in the Skull Caverns. Now, I could just put up a two second clip from each day and leave it at that, but all of you deserve more than that. So instead, I've made a little montage of my five day Skull Cavern adventure. I hope you enjoy.
Now, what you didn't see during that montage was me taking all of my copper ores and using them to make a ton of furnaces. I also sold some of my iridium bars to Clint and used the gold I got from this to upgrade my barn. As I stood in my shed, watching my furnaces bounce up and down, their red glow stimulating my senses and making me feel cathartic, I realized that I wanted more of this feeling. I promptly took more iridium bars to Clint's and sold them, then bought a full stack of 999 copper ores. Coupled with a stack of 999 stone, I made 49 more furnaces and promptly placed them in my shed. For the first time in a long time, I feel complete. I feel like all is well in the world. I feel like I can achieve anything and everything I put my mind to. My brain is fired up. Every single vein in my body is no longer fueled by blood and oxygen, but rather by complete undying optimism and hope for the future. This serene feeling was further strengthened when one of my cows, Pubert, gave birth to a baby cow. I lovingly named this new baby cow Hubert. So, I bet you're all wondering how much money I made from those skull cavern runs. Or maybe you're asking if any of my crops grew. Perhaps you would like to know how many iridium bars I ended up with. I would love to answer those questions, but I cannot, as day 39 is the luau. I put a silver star ice pip into the soup, then talked to Leah. I want her. I want her so bad. If Leah was a real person, I would awkwardly nod my head at her and then refuse to speak to her or even look at her. The ice pip I added to the soup earns me the best result, which means we get some bonus friendship points with the villagers. Also, here are all of the crops that I harvested during the Skull Cavern adventure period. To end the day, I take around 70% of the items I collected in the Skull Cavern and throw them into my shipping bin. This earns us over 120,000 gold. On day... Uh, 40? Yeah, 40. Uh, Leah visits the farm and gives us a sculpture she was working on. She says the name of the sculpture is How I Feel About Joja Joker. Maybe it's just because I possess a serious lack of knowledge when it comes to art, but that name makes zero sense to me. In fact, I am seriously reconsidering romancing Leah after this event. I harvest my tomatoes, peppers and hops, then put some milk and eggs into their respective machines in order to make cheese and mayonnaise. I also throw some items into my shipping bin. At this point, I don't think I need to mention that anymore, so you can just assume I'm working away on the shipping goal. And now it is time for us to truly reap the rewards of our Skull Cavern adventure. I take around 400 iridium bars out of my smelting shed and throw them into my shipping bin. Now it is time to welcome some more animals to the family. Please give a warm welcome to Ripley, Mineo and Sussy the goats. I then go to Marnie's bedroom and pick up Lewis's shorts. But I'm not going to give them back to him. No, I'm, I'm keeping them. I'm 100% going to put them on display in my house at some point. I pay a visit to Leah where I get the option to ask her for a kiss. The word creepy was in brackets beside this option though, so there was no way I was picking that one. And besides, I'm fairly certain Leah could absolutely knock my farmer out with a single punch if she wanted to. So, it's just a bad choice all around. Another Leah cutscene followed this one. She was on the phone with her ex who seemed to be hassling her. If I ever met her ex, I would walk up to him, shake his hand and say, Well, Leah's ex, how are you getting on, man? Then I would hit him with the three-hit combo. Kick him between the legs, poke his eyes, and twist his nose. It always works. Also, I have some terrible news. I went to give Lewis a prismatic shard, but for some reason it gave Lewis his purple shorts back instead. I have never been so irate in my entire life. In fact, I was so angry that I gave the prismatic shard to George instead. I head to Robbins and ask her to upgrade my barn for the final time. How are we still on day 40? This is ridiculous. I buy two void eggs from Krobus, collect Robin's axe, and buy a rare seed from the traveling cart. Also, you remember the 400-ish iridium bars I put in my shipping bin? Yeah, we made around 600,000 gold from them. That is scrumptious. On day 41, I harvest some crops that have grown and plant my ancient seeds. I do not know why I waited until now to do that, but I have never claimed to be smart. I give a prismatic shard to my two favorite people, Linus and Leah. I then watch a cutscene with Abigail. On day 42, our starfruit is finally ready for harvest. I have made the executive decision to sell only one starfruit. 
I'm going to keep the rest for when I start making wine. I water the remaining crops, then use the forage I've collected so far to make some summer seeds and plant them on the farm. I pay a visit to Leah because I want to give her a golden pumpkin, but she leaves her house as soon as I get there. That hurt. I then watch a cutscene where Georgia Joker helps Leah get an apple from a tree. Leah then says, and I quote, You know, I just realized something. Even if my art career is a flop, I will always have a friend to catch me on the way down. A friend. With my heart shattered, I give Leah a golden pumpkin and buy a rare seed and a beer from the traveling cart. On day 43, I return Robin's axe to her and ask her to upgrade my house. I then head to Piers and buy 100 of each summer crop. I also buy 1,998 melon seeds. Before I leave, I catch a glimpse of Abigail in the kitchen and I can't help but feel slightly emotional about not romancing her for the first time in a long time. I return to my farm and plant all of the seeds I bought. Once again, this is what my farm looks like. I promise it will look at least three times nicer after the first few days of fall. I begin day 44 with a trip to Coleco Desert where I exchange Omni Geodes for artifact troves. I also pick up a desert warp totem and do a bit of foraging. I crack open all of my artifact troves and frozen geodes at Clint's and get a couple of new items to donate to the museum. That isn't me downplaying it by the way. I legitimately got maybe 4 new things to donate out of all the geodes and artifact troves I cracked open. The good news is, we're 2 minerals and around 10 artifacts away from being finished with the museum collection. After selling most of the leftover artifacts and minerals to Clint, I head to the community center and donate a few more items. I give Leah a pearl to end the day. On the morning of day 45, Leah invites us to her art convention in town. Also, Gus shows up and gives us the mini jukebox. This is, unironically, the greatest moment in this entire playthrough so far, nay, the entirety of my time playing Stardew Valley. I love the mini jukebox. I do not care if we fail all of our goals at this point. In my eyes, I won as soon as Gus handed this delightful piece of machinery to me. I harvest my summer forage, which I turn into summer seeds and plant again. We have reached level 10 in every skill except foraging, so I need to keep planting summer seeds and probably fall seeds to complete that goal. It is time for another moment of peace. As I stare out at my farm, I feel oddly at peace with the world. I watch shenanigans running to and fro on the farm, the rabbits gallivanting through the grass, the ducks and geese frolicking around in the seeds. The bang of Robin's hammer on the side of my house brings me back to earth. But it also makes me realize how much progress I have made on my farm and the various structures it now contains, as well as the various friendships I have formed with the beautiful people of Pelican Town. Yo, Sebastian, forget about your motorbike, man, you don't need that anymore. I'm gonna get a Tesla and put it on self-driving mode so we can cuddle in the backseat while we watch Finding Nemo. Day 46 is the day of Leah's art show. I feel a sense of pride and accomplishment for helping Leah to unlock her newfound confidence. As for the cost of her sculptures, Leah and I have selected initial values based upon data from villagers' gross income this year, as well as other factors such as how much we like each villager before deciding on a price. Among other things, we're looking at average villager gold earn rates on a daily basis, and we will be making constant adjustments to ensure the villagers are given prices that are compelling, enticing, and of course, affordable. We appreciate the candid feedback and the passion the community in Pelican Town has put forth regarding the current prices at the art show today on the town's notice board and across our various social media outlets. Leah and I will continue to make changes and monitor community feedback and update everyone as soon and as often as we can. On day 47, Leah sends us a lovely letter in the mail to thank us for going to her art show. Of course, what she doesn't know is that I have stolen all of the art pieces and have broken them down for more wood and stone. At the traveling cart, I buy a rare seed, a pumpkin soup, a mead, and a fairy rose. I head to Robin's and buy the furniture catalogue and ask her to upgrade my shed. After that, I make a trip to Piers to buy the catalogue and the bouquet. I am sure you can guess who I'll be giving this bouquet to. Or maybe you can't. I've kind of flirted with three people so far, and to be honest, I don't know whether to give it to Leah, Abigail, or Sebastian. As the crop fairy visits the farm during the night, I find myself wondering if perhaps I should not give the bouquet to anybody and simply remain single. On day 48, I give the bouquet to Leah. I, I mean, yeah, it was always going to be her. Except for last night when I wasn't sure who to give it to. I'm not very good at making decisions. Or am I? Anyway, it is time once again to welcome some new animals to the family. Please welcome Lecky Binch and Deed Pun the pigs, as well as Sal Volcano and the Pebble the goats. 
It is only when I watched the footage of me naming the first goat that I realized I misspelled Sal Volcano's name. It is not Sal Volcano, it is Sal Volacano. That is embarrassing. On day 49, Pierre sends me a letter letting me know that I can now purchase a bouquet. Why is everyone in this town always so late with important information? First the mines, then Mr. QI's quest, and now Pierre and the bouquet. Unreliable. After harvesting summer forage, turning them into summer seeds and planting them, I head to Robbins and ask her to build the first of three ponds on my farm. I spend the rest of the day getting started on completely reorganizing the shed containing all of my chests. The entirety of day 50 is spent reorganizing that same shed, and in my opinion, it looks a lot nicer than it used to. Day 51 marks the third and final day in a row that I spent working on my shed. Did I spend longer than I should have reorganizing everything? Absolutely I did. Am I proud of how it turned out? Yes. Yes I am. On day 52, I harvest some crops and a ton of summer forage. Also, a meteor landed on the farm. This is an inconvenience of the highest tier. I do not require the iridium ore that can be collected from it. It has completely ruined the vibe of my farm, so I immediately demolish it. I make over 1200 summer seeds and throw them into a chest. I completely forgot to watch Caroline's two heart cutscene to unlock the tea sapling recipe, so I'll just leave them in there until I unlock it. I decide to throw a super cucumber into the pond that Robin built, then I head to Robin's and ask her to build the second pond. I also buy some wood and stone as well as a telephone and a calendar while I was there. I am fully aware that I could have gotten the telephone and calendar from the furniture catalogue, but I have what I believe is called a lot of money right now, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I need to stop laughing at my own silly jokes. I run into Caroline who says she and Pierre have everything I need for my farm. Turns out that was a lie because the store is closed. Krobus is selling the tiger trout fish, so I buy all five of them because I'm very selfish. You remember that video I mentioned on day one when I used a scythe to go off screen and get into the mines? I am once again reminding you that that video is linked in the description and will explain what I am doing here better than I ever could. Basically, after using a chair to get past the minecart, I walk to the quarry mine area and use a chair to get into it. My plan was to farm the skulls in the quarry mine for oak resin, but it turns out they don't respawn when you leave the mine and go back in. That was truly a heartbreaking way to end the day. On day 53, I make as many kegs, cheese presses, preserve jars, seed makers, looms and oil makers as I can. I don't have a shed to put them in right now, so I set them up in my barn instead. I want to get a start on our starfruit wine empire before fall begins. I also decide to make 70 crystallariums so I can eventually set up a shed for mass producing diamonds. Oh, also, at this point I'm going to be spending at least the last 2 or 3 hours each day in the skull caverns collecting as much ores and coal as I can. Iridium bars are going to be our primary money maker just in case our plan to make starfruit wine falls apart. On day 54, I buy a bok choy, a moral, and a rare seed from the traveling cart. I head to Robbins and buy three stacks of wood and ask her to build the final pond on my farm. Oh, also, also, in addition to going to the Skull Caverns, I've been heading to the secret woods and collecting hardwood every day. The tractor makes this a 20 second process at the most, which is very nice. On day 55, our melons are finally ready for harvest. I feel a slight sense of sadness as I break all of the giant melons, but it must be done. Our entire farm is going to be cleared of every crop by or on the first day of fall so that I can finally make the farm look pretty. I decide to throw all of the crops I harvested today into the shipping bin along with some cheese and starfruit jelly. Day 56, the final day of summer. I awaken with almost 800,000 gold. Two large eggs are ready to collect in the coop. This is perfect. I need to ship one of these eggs and donate the other to the community center. I also collect three normal eggs, one of which I will use to make a fried egg for the community center too. I harvest all of the summer forage and the final batch of crops, then I decide it's time to make that fried egg. I tried to throw the two large eggs out of my inventory, but I kept picking them back up. I then purposely put the two large eggs near the end of my inventory. I assumed this would force the game to make the fried egg using one of the three normal eggs. I was wrong. This could not have gone any worse. I donate some items to the community center, then once again buy a rare seed from the traveling cart as well as a common mushroom. I, I mean, I haven't seen one of them so far, so it can't be a very common mushroom. Do you, do you, do you get... no? Okay. Uh, uh, I buy a rare crow and 10 miners treats from the dwarf, then put a battery into the power box in the underpass to start Mr. QI's quest. Fun fact, 
You do not have to wait until you find the secret note that tells you to do this. You can put the battery in there at any point to start the quest. Before I go any further, I would like to mention that this video took me quite a while to make, no, I'm just kidding. Listen, I want to apologize for any potential decrease in the quality of the audio of this month compared to last month's. Uh, between me recording the voiceover for spring and me recording this month's voiceover, I got sick. I'm, 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 I'm in tremendous pain right now. My throat hurts so much when I speak. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let's continue. It is finally time for my favorite festival, the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. However, something peculiar happened here. I bumped into Harvey on the bridge and he refused to let me pass. I, in turn, refused to let him pass. This was truly a battle for the ages. A clash of the titans, the irresistible force had met the immovable object. My spirit was beginning to dwindle as I realized that Harvey was not going to give in. He was dedicated beyond human comprehension. But something deep down in my heart told me that I must keep going. I cannot give up. As famous rapper John Cena once said, Whether fighting or spitting, my discipline is unforgiving. Got you backing up in the defensive position. These lyrics inspired me. With vigor in my heart and one goal in sight, I knew right then and there that I had to move forward like a breath exhaled from the earth. With every ounce of vile and venom that runs through my veins, I barged past Harvey and as I made my way to the end of the pier, I saw what I had been fighting for on the bridge. It was Leah. I stood beside her for a moment, taking in the final day of summer, for I knew that despite how much effort I had put in so far, tomorrow is when the grind truly begins. On day 60, I put my super cucumber row into the chest beside my preserves jar to make aged row. I also moved my auto grabber away from the chest because the automate mod is automatically taking all of the milk out of the auto grabber and turning it into cheese. We don't want that. I head into town and accept my first special order. The wizard wants prismatic jelly. Next I do some fishing at the beach to catch the fall beach fish. I bump into Leah and give her a salad, then I spend some time catching the fall fish at the river. Leah watches me do this for, for some reason. Next, it's time to catch another legendary fish. This time we're going for the angler fish. This ends up being rather easy, which is nice because I already know the glacier fish in winter is going to completely destroy me. I spent some more time going for the fish at the beach, then I head to the secret woods to catch the midnight carp. At around midnight, I realize that this isn't going to happen. I also remember that I always caught the midnight carp at the mountain lake because it never showed up for me in this pond in the secret woods. On day 61, I begin by planting my rare seeds. I use speed grow to make sure they grow before the end of the month. I head to the traveling cart to buy a pumpkin, a peach, and a walleye. Then I watch a cutscene with Leah. We were having a lovely picnic when it was very rudely interrupted by Leah's ex. I did not appreciate this interruption. Channeling my inner Mike Tyson, I lay him out with a single punch. Did I overreact? Maybe. But you never, ever mess with a man's picnic. In the community center, I finally finish the fishing bundle. I also donate a truffle to the bounty board bundle and a large milk and a pumpkin. Finally, I finish off the fall foraging bundle for which I receive 30 fall seeds. Back on my farm, I collect two pomegranates and two apples from my trees and take another apple out of a chest. I watch a cutscene with Abigail where she talks about how she wants to use a sword and be an adventurer. Nope. Nope, not that song again. Let's just move on, alright? We don't need to deal with this. We're moving on. I head to the community center and donate three apples and a pomegranate. I finish the day by catching the midnight carp at the mountain lake. On the morning of day 62, Lewis lets us know that we can give a mermaid's pendant to a villager to propose to them. I will keep that in mind. At this point, our fruit trees won't produce fruit until next fall, so I chop them down. I already got all the fruit I needed, so this isn't a big deal at all. Next, I watch a cutscene where William tells us about panning. 
I completely forget how to do that. I tried for about 10 seconds and then I gave up. I might need to do some research on panning, it, it could be important, I don't know, I forget everything about it. In Robin's house, she and Demetrius are arguing about whether a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable. My head says that it's a fruit, but my heart believes it is a vegetable. I side with Robin in this argument. I add the extra rooms to my house, then ask Robin to build a cellar in my house. Unless I have forgotten something, this means we have achieved our goal of fully upgrading the house. I head to Piers and I bump into Abigail. Your hair looks cool today. Why are you doing this to me? I forgot to buy amaranth seeds at the start of the month, so I buy 100 of them. I plant them beside the greenhouse, then head to the mines to try to find a prismatic slime. I had no luck with this, and I passed out. On day 63, I collect super cucumber roll from my pond and the bok choys that have grown. I buy a crocus from the traveling cart and exchange omni geodes for artifact troves. After a bit of foraging in the desert, I donate the crocus to the community center. Then once again, it's off to the mines to try to get the prismatic jelly from a prismatic slime. Today is the final day to complete the special order, so I have to do it tonight. Unfortunately, luck was not on my side and I ended up leaving the mines empty-handed. This was not a good day. On the morning of day 64, I harvest some eggplants, then head to the special orders board. I want to redeem myself for the prismatic jelly kerfuffles, so I pick another special order that relates to the mines. I need to collect 100 bones. This shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. Next, I watch a cutscene with William. For some reason, there are a ton of crabs inside the shop. I, I don't... I... I don't know what else to say about this. I head to Clint's and crack open all of my artifact troves. This was a complete waste of time because none of the artifacts we still have to donate can be found in artifact troves. The good news though is that we only need 6 artifacts and 2 of them can be found using secret notes which we can unlock in winter. I wanted to sell my artifacts to Clint but he doesn't buy them. This is a bad month. The rest of the day is spent in the mines collecting bones from skeletons. This video is already way too long, so I won't waste your time by talking about me going through the mines during the next 2 or 3 days collecting bones. On day 65, my beets are ready for harvest. I've got some extra space on my farm now, so I grab my pumpkin, cranberry and yam seeds. I take a truffle oil from my chest in the barn and make a rain totem. I use it to make sure it rains tomorrow. I plant all of my seeds, then head to the mountain to do some digging to try to find some artifacts. We don't get anything, but I'm going to do this as often as I can to make sure we finish the museum collection. Now it is time to continue with Mr. QI's quest. I head to the bathhouse area and put a rainbow shell into a box. I donate an eggplant to the museum, then complete part 3 of Mr. QI's quest. On day 66, I harvest the cranberries- cranber I'm so tired. On day 66, I harvest the cranberries that have grown, then spend some time trying to catch a walleye fish. Unsurprisingly, it does not show up. I am in dire need of some dopamine, so I head to Robin's and ask her to build a shed on my farm. I go to the beach and buy the mermaid's pendant, then I head to Leah's house and give the mermaid's pendant to her. That was the single most important thing I had to do today, so I do some fishing beside Penny's trailer and finally catch a walleye. Uh, also, just in case you don't know what a dire need is, it's like when you need something, but but it's it's dire. On day 67, I harvest some artichokes. Now. Normally, Pierre only begins to sell artichoke seeds during year 2. But, if you plant mixed seeds during year 1, then there's a chance for them to become artichoke seeds. Also, while I was in the mines a couple of weeks ago, a doggy dropped a yam and I completely forgot about it until now. I take it to the community center and donate it. The rest of the day is spent in the Skull Caverns. The Junimos repair the greenhouse during the night, which is fantastic, and we make around 340,000 gold from selling our artisan goods. I start day 68 by harvesting the fall forage that has grown. I make some iridium sprinklers, then collect all of the oak resin from the trees in the forest which I use to make kegs. I take all of my starfruit out of a chest and place the kegs into my new shed. I warp to the desert and buy starfruit seeds from Sandy, then make 78 quality fertilizer and collect 30 more fertilizer from a chest. I honestly considered not mentioning the quality fertilizer at all because of what happens next, but there is no success without failure, so I feel it is my duty to showcase my biggest failure so far. After planting all of the quality fertilizer in the greenhouse, I hopped on my tractor to plant the starfruit seeds. But I messed up. I messed up big time. 
I had my pickaxe equipped when I hopped on the tractor, so I automatically used it, which means all of the fertilizer was destroyed. This is truly an L plus ratio moment. I plant the starfruit seeds, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. To end the day, I take all of the preserves jars I made earlier, put them in my keg shed, and fill them up with starfruit. I pass out on my way back to the farm. Today was not a good day. In fact, this entire month has just been horrible. It's, it's all downhill from here, let's be honest. This entire 100 days is going to fall apart this month, I guarantee you. I might have been wrong about that. Day 69 is the day of the wedding. This is a special day. When I stood across from Leah, I don't really know how to describe how I felt. You know, it was like... It was like... Like... Like a river flows Surely to the sea Darling, so... Okay, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. Enough, enough, enough. Please, please, I can't sing, I can't sing. Please, enough, enough. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, stop. Uh... Yeah, yeah, we we got married. That let's let's just move on. All right, I don't. We, we all agree not to mention. Like, okay, I give Leah a salad, then harvest some crops. The important one here is the amaranth. O okay, maybe it's not that important, or maybe it's not important at all. But I wanted to give it a shout out because I almost forgot to buy the seeds at the start of this month. I head to Robin's where I decide to move my greenhouse. I'm happy with how the farm looks right now, but I do have some ideas on how to make it look even nicer in the future. I also ask Robin to build a shed on my farm. Back on my farm, I spent some time making an area for crops and for the four obelisks. I can never say that word prop- You know what? Magical towers. That's what we're calling them now. Back on my farm, I spent some time making an area for crops and for the four magical towers I'll buy at some point before the end of these 100 days. Or maybe I won't buy the four magical towers. We don't know yet. I also noticed that my yams had grown, so I harvest them before I go to sleep. On day 70, I decide it's time to sell almost everything we've gotten from our Skull Cavern adventures. Our smelting shed is a well-oiled machine at this point. Iridium bars are being made 24-7. I also take the fresh artisan goods out of the chest in the barn and dump everything into the shipping bin. I decide to spend the rest of the day decorating the house. This is what the farmhouse looks like now. This took me longer than I would like to admit, but Leah lives here now, so I can't always be thinking about just myself all the time. Side note, I felt very, very weird making that picture. If it was just one picture of Leah, it, it would have been fine, but there was like nine Leahs staring at me while I was making it. Any whomst, we made 3.5 million gold from everything we sold. That is not enough. We have 30 days left to make around 44 million gold if we want to complete our goal of earning 50 million gold in total. Our shed has been built, so on the morning of day 71, I take the crystallariums I built last month, I believe, and set them up in the shed. After placing them all down, I realize that the automate mod does not put the diamonds into the crystallarium, so I break them all and put them down again. I also make sure to add diamonds to them as I go along, so as not to repeat that mistake again. That was kind of embarrassing. After that, I harvest the fairy roses and cranberries that have grown, then read a letter from Lewis. The Stardew Valley Fair is tomorrow. I actually forgot about that festival, so I'm glad he sent that letter. I head to Robin's to ask her to build another shed on my farm. These sheds aren't just for decoration, by the way. I actually do have a plan for them, just in case you were wondering. I take a solar essence and two desert warp totems out of a chest and warp to the desert. I put the solar essence into the old dragon skeleton to complete Mr. QI's quest. Then I head home and retrieve the club card from my house, and with that, we have unlocked the casino. I head to the casino and talk to Mr. QI, Mr. 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 Key, Mr. Mr. You know what? Mr. Blue. All right, we're calling him Mr. Blue now. I refuse to partake in the absolute buffoonery known as gambling, so I buy QI coins instead. Or, or blue coins, because his, his name is Mr. Blue. That name needs some work. I might have to go back to the drawing board on that one. Anyway, after I buy a rear crow and a farm warp totem, I have 1,500 coins left over. You can use these coins to buy hardwood fences, so I'll probably come back at some point and buy a ton of those. On day 72, I take my garlic seed and three rice shoots out of a chest, harvest the ancient fruit that has grown, harvest some pumpkins and cranberries, and plant the garlic seed and rice shoots in my greenhouse. Next, it is time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I immediately set up my grange display because I want to win first place in the competition. I also decide to pay a visit to the fortune teller. They revealed three visions they had about me. 
The first is they saw Pamela standing by my side while I recover in the hospital. Listen, that is a lovely thing for Pamela to do, but I haven't been knocked out a single time so far. That hasn't happened, and it probably won't happen. The second vision is it is dark, and I am with a young lady whose name starts with L. I wonder who that could be. The final vision is something dreadful bearing down on me, but I'm ready to face it. Now you might think that this something dreadful is a monster in the mines, but no. It is actually somebody spreading rumors that I am not a silly goose. That is complete baloney. I am such a silly goose that I live in a pond. I achieve a score of 69 in the slingshot game, then I buy the star tokens that I need. I buy a star drop and a rare crow, as well as everything else that is on sale except for the mixed seeds. That's it for day 72. On day 73, I crack open Omni Geodes and Clint Shop so I can get the last two minerals I need. I also brought two artifacts with me that I got from digging up pretty much the entire town multiple times. These villagers would definitely hate me if I wasn't giving them prismatic shards and rabbit's feet every day. I donate these four items to the museum and then I check the overall museum collection. I have donated all of the minerals and the last two artifacts I need are the strange dolls. I can get these when I find secret notes in winter so we're guaranteed to complete the museum collection. At this point I think it's time to come up with a plan for our goals. Long story short, I'm basically waiting until winter to make any more progress on the majority of our goals. There are items and fish on Ginger Island that I need for the shipping and fishing collections, but I can't go there yet. Uh, as well as this, the gold clock and the magical towers can't be built until we complete the community center and also unlock Ginger Island. The last two items we need are a snow yam and a nautilus shell, and we can only get those in winter unless we get really lucky and the traveling cart sells them, but that's unlikely. So yeah, that's four goals we're locked out of right now. One of the monsters we need to defeat for the monster eradication goal is also on Ginger Island, so that's impossible to complete until winter as well. One of the star drops we need is linked to completing the fishing collection, so once again, we can't complete that right now. And we can't get the final two artifacts until we unlock the secret notes in winter. Well, we could get them now, but we're guaranteed to get them with the secret notes, so it's just easier if we wait. Basically, what I'm trying to get at here is the only goals we can work on for the rest of this month are the friendship and 50 million gold ones. Cards on the table, I I'm nervous now. Up until this point, I've pretty much always been making progress towards our goals and that really helped to keep the video entertaining. So for the next 13 days, I'm going to have to be in overdrive mode trying to make sure the video is still entertaining. Anyway, enough wasting time. Let's move on to the rest of day 73. Y yeah, we're, we're still in day 73. Sorry about that. It is time to collect some secret items. I head to Jody's house and put a strange bun into the tie box in Vincent's bedroom and receive the fur fur the fur the fur fur furogamon doll. Next, I head to the saloon and put a duck mayonnaise into a box to get the pinky lemon doll. Finally, I head to the blacksmiths and sacrifice a super cucumber for the final doll, the HMTGF doll. Has anybody ever figured out what HMTGF stands for? Hat Mouse took Grandpa's farm? Maybe the house that the Hat Mouse lives in now was originally Grandpa's, and Grandpa had to move to the house we're in now after the Hat Mouse kicked him out of the house he was in. I I think, ha look, what I'm trying to get at here is I think Hat Mouse evicted Grandpa from his own house. All right, let's just move on before I spend weeks trying to figure out what HMTGF stands for. On the morning of day 74, I do nothing for a while because I was absolutely mesmerized by the tranquility of what is on screen right now. Also, last night I did some more decorating. I filled up our fish tank with the legendary fish I caught, and I put the three secret dolls in my little souvenir room. I harvest some crops, then fill up my new shed with all of the preserves jars I have and fill them up with star fruit. I, I think you know the drill by now, I ask Robin to build yet another shed on my farm. That's pretty much all the buildings I need, so all we have to do in the future is upgrade our four sheds. On day 75, I harvest the yams that have grown and start collecting the oak resin from the forest. I take a quick break and visit the traveling cart where I buy a nautilus shell for the community center. I finish collecting the oak resin from the trees, then head to the community center and donate the nautilus shell, completing the bounty board. At this point, all we need to donate is the snow yam. Like I've done for pretty much the last month or so, I spend the rest of the day in the skull caverns. On day 76, I receive a star drop from Leah for getting her to 12 and a half hearts. That is an exquisite way to start the day. I also read a letter from Lewis. Because we completed the bounty board in the community center, we received 500 friendship points with the villagers, which is equal to two full hearts. 
This is brilliant news. That actually helps us a lot with our friendship goal. I harvest some crops, then I fill up my final shed with kegs. I then fill these sheds with some starfruit that I scavenged from the other two sheds. Our crystallariums have produced diamonds, so I take the remaining crystallariums and place them in the shed while filling them up with diamonds as I go. Y yeah, I'm actually kind of worried about our goal to earn a total of 50 million gold. Right now, I'm about 70% certain we can complete it. I used the fall forage I've been saving to make 100 fall seeds and plant them in the spaces that were freed up when I harvested the yams yesterday. I head to Robin's and buy a few stacks of wood, then I move my sheds around and ask Robin to upgrade one of them. When I leave Robin's shop, I get a cutscene with her and Linus. We then get the option to say one of two things. This is where the game tries to pull a sneaky on you. If you invite Linus to live on your farm, which is a very nice thing to do, he refuses. But if you simply say you're happy Linus is doing well, you earn 250 friendship points with him. For the first time in a long time, I do not spend the rest of the day in the Skull Cavern. Instead, I decorate the area with my sheds. I'll show you all what my farm looks like at the end of this month because the farm won't look as nice during the winter month because we lose all our grass and there's snow everywhere. On day 77, it is redemption time. I need to make up for the garlic kerfuffle. I harvest the garlic that has grown in my greenhouse, put it into a seed maker and receive not two, not three, not four, but one garlic seed. Again. I plant the seed in my greenhouse and try not to cry. I decide to take pretty much all of the artisan goods from my sheds and from my barn, along with most of my bars and around half of the items I collected in the Skull Cavern and throw them all into my shipping bin. At the end of the day, we receive almost 4 million gold for those items. This isn't good. I mean, the money is good, but I don't think we're going to hit that 50 million gold mark. But I'm okay with that. As long as we can afford the gold clock and the magical towers, I will be very happy. On day 78, I harvest some crappie whoppies and collect some roe from my ponds. I also accidentally harvest some of the grass in my animal area. That was foolish of me to do. I head to Robins and ask her to upgrade my shed, then head to the Skull Caverns. The first floor is a monster-only floor. My spirit is willing, but my heart is weak. I leave almost immediately and head to Piers to buy some grass starter. Like many times I've bought stuff in shops, I already have grass starter in my chest, but I want more. I am greedy. I am selfish. I am self-indulgent. I am I'm I'm ravenous. I I I need to buy a thesaurus and and get more words. I cover the areas reserved for the magical towers, gold clock and extra crops with some stone floors to prevent any stone, wood, weeds, yada 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 from growing on them. The rest of the day is spent putting grass on my farm, planting some trees as decorations and planting some more crops. On day 79, I harvest some ancient fruit, take my other ancient fruit out of a chest and put them into a seed maker. There's not really anything else I wanted to do today, so I head to the Skull Caverns. I also spent day 80 in the Skull Caverns after I harvested some rice and asked Robin to upgrade my shed. It is once again time to sell off some items I have been hoarding up to this point. On the morning of day 81, I throw some artisan goods, iridium bars and gems into my shipping bin. I then head back to my natural habitat, the Skull Caverns, for the rest of the day. We made just over 1.1 million gold from the items we sold. On day 82, my sweet gem berries have finally grown. I throw the four gold star ones into my shipping bin. Looking back on this, this may have been a mistake. I probably should have put three of those four into the seed maker. I harvest all of the star fruit in my greenhouse along with the garlic. The star fruit is going to be thrown into my kegs and preserves jars. As for the garlic, I do have a plan for it. That plan will be revealed in winter. I gotta build some suspense, alright? Keep you on your toes. Our oak resin is also ready in the forest. Again, this is brilliant news. We can use this to make kegs and the luck speed grow. I start walking towards Robin so I can ask her to upgrade the last shed, but she walks out of her shop right as I get there. I am not happy about that. After making the aforementioned speed grow and kegs and taking extra kegs out of a chest, I plant my ancient seeds in the greenhouse. I place all of the kegs I have on me at my keg shed, then head into the secret woods. I give a sweet gem berry to the Old Master Cannoli statue and receive a star drop in return. Finally, I throw my remaining sweet gem berries into the seed maker. On day 83, those four sweet gem berries have turned into six rare seeds. I plant them in my greenhouse and do a little dance to celebrate the fact that I managed not to lose any of those seeds. I collect some artisan goods from my sheds and plop them into my shipping bin. I wanted to go into town, but the Spirit Eve Festival is being set up, so I head to the desert instead. I take a look at the desert trader shop and see the spring, summer, fall and winter seeds they have for sale. 
This reminds me that I have around 2,000 of those seeds in the chest because I kept the 1,800-ish summer seeds I made. I decided to go through levels 25 to 29 in the mines to collect fiber. We need wood, fiber, and summer seeds or fall seeds or whatever to make tea saplings. This could be a good way for us to make money. At around 10pm I head to the Spirits Eve Festival and buy a rare crow and the jack-o'-lantern recipe. I make my way through the maze and collect the golden pumpkin at the end. Also, this is what my farm looks like right now. I'm fairly happy with it, and I don't really think I'm going to make many changes to it before the end of these 100 days, so this is pretty much the way it's going to be for a while. Day 84, the final day of fall. Our morning begins with a phone call from the Hat Mouse. They want us to bring them coins so we can buy the hats they have for sale. I harvest all of the crops that have grown and turn the fall forage into 200 fall seeds. Everything I have in my inventory except the fall seeds gets thrown into my shipping bin. I head to the traveling cart and buy the last rare crow I need. Today is a certified exquisite day because of that. I head to the beach where Haley is upset because she lost her bracelet that her great grandmother gave her. After finding the bracelet beside Elliot's house, I give it to her. Haley then hugs me for an uncomfortably long period of time considering I am married to Leah. I head to Sandy's shop and buy 500 beet seeds. Just like the garlic I harvested in my greenhouse, these 500 beet seeds will play a role in my winter plan. I return home to put my scythe and watering can in a chest, and then I head to the Skull Cavern. If I'm being honest, I am kind of annoyed with myself for ending the final day of the month with a Skull Cavern run, but there really isn't anything else we can do today, so... We move. My, 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 my friend said we moved to me last month, so I hope that's like a, a cool thing to say. Uh, yeah. Also, just in case you're wondering, this script for this month alone was over 5,000 words long. This video is going to be like 90 minutes long. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being the longest 100 Days of Stardew Valley video ever made. Uh, actually, that, that, that might be kind of cool, actually. Um, regardless, I'm going to try to sort of condense winter a small bit. I don't want to go too much in detail anymore because, like I said, it's just taking up too much time. Day 85 is the first day of winter, so the first thing I do is grab my heaters and put them in my coop and in my barn to keep my animals warm. Next I decide it's time to move some of my machines out of the barn, so I collect everything except the kegs and the cheese presses. We also got a letter in the mail with a recipe for the deluxe scarecrow, as we collected the final rare crow yesterday. I add some preserves jars, oil makers and mayonnaise machines to one of my sheds and fill them up. I meet the shadow guy at the bus stop, then try to dig up a snow yam. Thankfully, I get one within about 5 seconds of trying to find one. I head to the special orders board and accept Linus's quest. The reward for completing this quest is the recipe to make fiber seeds. I mean, yeah, of, of course we would get this quest after I've decided not to go with the tea sapling route. I head to the beach and use my tractor to dig everything up. This was honestly therapeutic. Every single bit of stress in my body was immediately replaced with tranquility. I do some fishing beside Penny's trailer to catch a perch and a link cod. Next I head to the playground and receive the magnifying glass from the shadow guy. This is really good, now we can collect secret notes. I head into the community center and donate the snow yam. Not only have we finished the winter foraging bundle, we have completed the community center in its entirety. Next I watch my favorite cutscene in the entire game, the cutscene with Maru and her telescope. I unironically believe that the vibes in this cutscene are immaculate. Whoa. <clears throat> Let me try that one more time. I unironically believe that the vibes in this cutscene are immaculate. I catch a squid at the beach, plant my winter seeds, and throw a squid into the third pond on my farm. Also, the Junimos repair the bridge to the quarry during the night. Sammy visits us on the morning of day 86 and invites us to his little performance in Zuzu City later on. I take my winter forage out of a chest and make 10 winter seeds. That is slightly less than I was expecting. The community center has officially been restored. I watch the cutscene and receive the Stardew Hero Trophy. Next I head to the quarry and demolish every rock and tree in sight. Then I participate in a little bit of horseplay. I realize that when I use my hoe on the ground, I get winter forage but if I use my pickaxe on that same ground, it goes back to normal. I then use my hoe on the ground again, and I receive more winter forage. I wanted to stop. I really, really wanted to stop. But I was hypnotized, and I did this for about a minute straight. Anyway, enough of that hornswogglism. 
It is time to go to Sammy's concert. As I watch the cutscene, I can't help but notice that Leah is not dancing with me. She is dancing with Elliot. I am not happy about this. It should have been me. Not her. I should have been the one dancing with Elliot. I hate the glacier fish. I hate it so much. The rest of the day is spent in the Skull Cavarinos. On day 87, my wine has reached silver star quality, so I take one of them out of the cask. This is for the Georgia Mart bundle we will unlock soon. Also, William lets us know that he wants to show us something in his shop. I remove some of the stone floors I placed, then prepare for a day with many, many, many jobs for us to do. I collect some oak resin and collect some winterforge at the bus stop, sell my artisan goods to Pier, then head to William's shop where he shows me his dilapidated boat. I donate the 5 battery packs, 200 hardwood and 5 iridium bars needed for the boat repair. Next I head to Clinty Poo and sell my iridium bars. I then head back home and grab everything I need for my next little task. I head to the bathhouse area and watch a cutscene with the wizard to start his quest. We pay a visit to our good friend Krobus and ask him to unlock the sewer within the sewer. I make my way through the area collecting fiber and secret notes as I go. At the end I collect the dark talisman. I once again head to the bathhouse area and enter the witch's swamp. I catch a void salmon and give a void mayonnaise to the goblin henchman, aka the single best NPC in the entire game. I collect the wizard's ink and head back to his tower. We now have the ability to use his shop. I immediately build the ocean and desert magical towers on my farm. However, I messed up. For some reason I only brought three earth crystals with me so I can't build the earth magical tower yet. I head back to my farm and collect the earth crystals I need, then head back to the wizard's tower, but I am too late. It is closed. The good news is the boat was repaired during the night. On day 88, William lets us know that we can now use his boat, which means we can go to Ginger Island. I collect some items from my chest that I will be using on the island, then find not one, but two nautilus shells at the beach. That makes me feel jolly. I buy a ticket to Ginger Island, which is weird because I am the reason why the boat is even working. I do not understand why William makes me pay 1000G to use it. Anyway, on Ginger Island I begin to collect as many golden walnuts as I possibly can. For the sake of saving a bit of time I won't go too in detail with the whole golden walnut thing. I watched like 5 different guides on how to find them all before this so I'm basically speedrunning collecting all of them. The plan is basically to collect all of the walnuts hidden in the ground and in bushes and things like that. Then spend the rest of the day collecting as many of them as I can in the volcano dungeon. On day 89, it is finally time to reveal my plan for the garlic I harvested last month. I put it into a seed maker so I collect the one seed it produced. I head to Georgia Mart to say goodbye to it and also to wonder why the final bundle isn't available yet. I head to Williams and buy a lead bobber and some bait. I head to Ginger Island and spend some time fishing for golden walnuts and the lionfish. Then I do a bit of lollygagging in the volcano dungeon, collecting journal scraps, golden walnuts and hopefully getting a pineapple seed from an enemy called Hothead. I also found a dragon's tooth, which is pretty cool. Thanks to a journal scrap I found, I am able to dig up the spot that contains an ostrich egg and a golden walnut. After unlocking the island farmhouse, I plant my melon, garlic, wheat and pineapple seeds. The melon, garlic and wheat are needed for a little quest on the island. I also need to ship a pineapple. I also plant my 500 beet seeds. On day 90, I water my crop arenos and shake the trees to see if I can find a golden coconut. I also destroy the ground in the name of science. Uh, okay, no, I did it to see if I could find anything cool. I head back to Pelican Town and do some fishing in the mines to finish off Linus's special order. I only need 6 or 7 pieces of trash, so it doesn't take too long. After that, I spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns collecting secret notes. On the morning of day 91, I decided it's time to finish the museum collection. I dig up the ancient doll above Georgia Mart, then I head to the desert and use my tractor to find the ancient doll because I wasn't sure exactly where it was. I head to the museum and donate the final two artifacts and nothing happens. I have forgotten something. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. Alright, false alarm. It turns out I put the skeletal tail and the skeletal hand into my mushroom's chest. I had a feeling it was these two because I hadn't received two pieces of the skeleton statue as a reward from the museum yet. I donate them to the museum and thankfully that is all. I receive the star drop and that is a goal completed. The rest of the day is once again spent collecting golden walnuts. I still had a good bit of iridium ores and bars in my shed last time I checked so I think I'll be fine not going to the Skull Cavern for a few nights. 
On day 92, I take something very important out of a chest. A golden coconut. I head back to Pelican Town and go to the special orders board. Pierre wants 25 gold star vegetables. This is great timing because we've got 500 beets growing on our island farm. Now it is time for the Festival of Ice. The travelling cart is there but they're not selling anything I need right now. The fishing competition starts and I decide to throw the competition. William has been incredibly kind to us since the day we arrived in Pelican Town so he deserves to have his moment. Winning the fishing competition is a bit like playing Call of Duty with your younger sibling and actually taking it seriously. It's just not right. I feel a deep sense of pride watching William be announced as the winner. From now on, I will be referring to him only as King William because he truly is one of the best people I have ever met. On the morning of day 93, I decide to throw some artisan goods into my shipping bin. I harvest my winter forage and make 70 winter seeds, then plant all of them. I head to Clinty Bear's shop and crack open a golden walnut, receiving a golden coconut. Wait, no, that's, that's not it. I crack open a golden coconut, receiving a golden walnut. I collect all of my coconuts from a chesty westy and head to Ginger Island to collect golden walnuts and get a start on collecting the items we need for the field office later on. On day 94, I unlock the island trader. Two important things occur here. The first is I trade my coconuts for 10 golden coconuts. The second is I spot the mango and banana tree saplings. At this point, I realize I need to ship a mango and a banana for the shipping collection. The problem is that mango and banana trees take 28 days to produce fruit after you plant them. This is not good. I head to Clint's and crack open my 10 golden coconuts. The good news is the last golden coconut gave us a banana sapling. The bad news is 4 of these 10 coconuts gave us the fossilized skull. I have been hoodwinked. I return to my farm and plant my new banana sapling. When it rains on Ginger Island, a bird will spawn in one of 4 locations. If you find this bird, it will drop a gem. We need to collect all four gems to complete a puzzle and receive golden walnuts. After collecting the first gem, I place it on a podium in the puzzle area. I head to the sewer within the sewer and catch the slime jack, then I head back to my farm and make kegs and tea saplings and throw the tea saplings into my shipping bin. Before the day ends, I place more kegs into a shed and place various fruits and vegetables into kegs and preserve jars. On day 95, I decide to collect the rest of my Silver Star wine and throw it into my shipping bin. I also make three rain totems and use one so it will rain tomorrow. Then I realize that that was a scallywag maneuver. We want it to rain on Ginger Island, which means we should have used it on Ginger Island. After making a replacement rain totem, I head to the Wizard's Tower and build the Earth Magical Tower. That is three of four Magical Towers built. All we need now is the Island Magical Tower. On Ginger Island, I very carefully harvest my beets because I don't want to accidentally harvest the garlic and wheat that has grown. I need to show these to the frog in the cave beside my house, but first I need to show him the melon and it hasn't grown yet. If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. It will make sense soon, I promise. I then use my rain totem properly this time and go fishing. I manage to catch the blue discus. Once again, the rest of the day is spent collecting golden walnuts. Also, a bolt of lightning struck the old Georgia Mart during the night, which means we can now complete the final bundle. On day 96, I collect the second gem required for the puzzle, use another rain totem, and make five flute blocks. I use these five flute blocks to complete the mermaid puzzle and receive some more golden walnuts. I bring the second gem to the puzzle room, repair the bridge to the dig site, destroy all the rocks there, dig up the ground, and help the scientist escape from the cave he was trapped in. I collect some more golden walnuts around that area, then complete the island surveys for two more golden walnuts. The word walnut has lost all meaning for me at this point. I donate what I have on me to the island collection, I think that's what it's called, collect some more donatable items from my chest, and of course I donate them. I receive some golden walnuts and a mango tree sapling as a reward. I plant that sapling on my farm, then I head back to Pelican Town and drop 25 gold star beads into the box of pier shop to complete a special order. I spend the rest of the day cleaning up the remaining friendships I need to max out. At the last minute, I remember I can now donate items to the final bundle. I head over there and donate a dinosaur mayonnaise, a prismatic shard, a gold star void salmon, a silver star bottle of starfruit wine, and a caviar. The final Juno mode does a cute little wave before they leave. That was a nice way to end the day. Surprise, surprise, on day 97, I am back on Ginger Island. I collect the third gem from a bird, place it in the puzzle area, and use the final rain totem. 
Back in Pelican Town, Linus is relaxing in the lake during winter. Linus is an interesting critter. I can't believe I'm saying this during winter, but I spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns. I thought we'd be finished with that place by now. I have once again returned to Ginger Island on day 98. The final bird is located just in front of the boat, which makes things easy for us. I bring the topaz to the puzzle area, completing the puzzle and earning some golden walnuts. I head to my farm and show three crops to the frog in the cave beside my house. For some reason, this frog is very fond of the melon, garlic and wheat that I've grown. Honestly, the goblin henchman might actually be my second favourite character behind this frog. In total, we receive 15 golden walnuts for doing this. I throw the crops into my shipping bin, get a golden coconut from a tree and enter Mr. Blue's walnut room. I take a look at his quests. I think it is only fitting that we do the Skull Cavern quest considering the fact that it is pretty much a home to me now. I also harvest a taro root and throw that into my shipping bin too. I warp home, then head to the Skull Cavern to do Mr. Blue's quest. But it also gives us the opportunity to collect radioactive ore. This is good for several reasons. We need to ship a radioactive ore and a radioactive bar for the shipping collection. Radioactive bars are also worth 4,500 gold because we picked the blacksmith perk when we reached level 10 in mining. I reached floor 100, completing both of Mr. Blue's quests to reach floor 100 of the Skull Cavern. We unlocked the original quest when we read a secret note telling us that somebody is waiting for us on floor 100 of the Skull Cavern. Back on my farm, I throw everything except my ores and coal into the bin of shipping. On the morning of day 99, I throw some animal products, artisan goods and various bars into my shipping bin so we can get closer to the 10 million gold we need to make the gold clock. I head to Ginger Island and harvest a pineapple which I throw into my shipping bin, then accept another quest from Mr. Blue. This time I decide to do the exact same quest. I have grown attached to the Skull Caverns. I've got 40 blue gems so I buy the Aquatic Sanctuary which is basically a really big fish tank and blue seasoning. I get on the boat and head back to Pelican Town. I drink a coffee and eat a spicy eel and a magic rock candy, then bulldoze my way through the Skull Caverns down to level 100, fueled by nothing but complete and utter willpower. With that quest completed, I head to the night market and do some fishing. I catch the midnight squid, the spookfish and the blobfish. I even made it look a little bit cinematic for the blobfish because it's the last fish we need to complete the fishing collection. Also, after everything we sold today, we made almost 700,000 gold. I start day 100 with a little bit of a flex. I put all five of the legendary fish into the aquatic sanctuary. Next, I make a gold star seafoam pudding by using the blue seasoning I bought yesterday. We still need a bit of gold to be able to afford the gold clock, so I take all of my bars and head to Clint's. I actually recorded some live commentary for this next part because I figured I should show my reaction to me finally reaching 10 million gold. I will play that for you now. I think we might be like 80,000 gold short after this, but we can sell some things to Pierre to make up for that, so it's not too bad. It's not the end of the world, basically. You're kidding. I don't believe it. No, no, I don't believe it. This, no, 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 no. No, I have gone into the Skull Cavern about 50,000 times in the last 100 days, all right? This entire video has me been going to the Skull Caverns because I wanted 10 million gold so that I could get the gold clock. This, no. Where is he, man? Does he not, like... Does he not? I, he, no, he works on Tuesdays. That... Ah, uh, it's the 16th of winter. Yeah, for some reason, Clint has this weird thing where on the 16th of winter, uh, he'll work for like an hour and then he'll leave his, his shop at 10 a.m. and he'll go to Harvey's, right? I get, we're, he's going to be in Harvey's, right? He'll go to Harvey's and then he'll go to the saloon afterwards and he'll be like, yeah, I don't care if anybody needs me. Anyway, yeah, there he is. You, you mad, you ruined it. Right, he just, he just, did, okay, the gold clock is literally the, like, That goal to build the, glo the gold clock on my farm is, like, I really want to do it. I, like, oh, I can't even speak. This is, this hurts. I'm laughing to cover the pain, all right? I am in tremendous mental and emotional and psychological pain, right? I can't believe this is, like, on the last day as well, Clint. Really? Really? 
Like, this, I don't... Uh, I'm just... Okay, okay. There's the, Okay, maybe I could sell a lot of things to, Clint, or, or to Pierre to make money. I, I don't know if I have time. Okay, 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 okay. I immediately start taking the crops from the previous month out of my chest. I head to Piers and sell them, but I'm still just under 200,000 gold short. I go back to my farm and collect everything I can. I am panicking right now. I really, really want that gold clock. After eating a spicy eel and drinking a coffee, I make one final desperate run to Piers. But alas, I am too late. Pierre, despite being at the counter, will not serve me. I am flabbergasted. But then a hero emerges. Somebody has decided to support me during my darkest hour. King William has sent me the final star drop for completing the fishing collection. That is why I refuse to win the fishing competition. I head to the forest and eat my gold star seafoam pudding to boost my fishing level up to level 15. I then catch the Iridium Crobus statue. I place this statue and the Stardew Hero Trophy beside my fish tank, pet shenanigans and go to sleep. Alright, we actually finished all 100 days. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this feature length movie. All that is left for us to do now is to see how many of our goals we completed. We'll go through the list in chronological order, starting with the shipping collection. We shipped a lot of items, but unfortunately we did not ship all of them. We're missing the ostrich egg, the mango and the banana. I did have an ostrich egg, but I realized near the end that there was no chance of us getting a banana or a mango on time, so I decided to keep the ostrich egg. Our second goal was to complete the fishing collection, and we actually did this. At this point I can say that I completed one of my goals, so regardless of what happens next, I already consider this a success. I want to give a very special shout out to King William because I could feel him guiding me the entire time. I would not have been able to achieve this goal without his constant support. Next we have the museum collection. We almost fumbled this one, but we did get it done in the end, so I'm very happy about that. Our fourth goal was to build the four magical towers. We managed to build the earth, water, and desert towers, but unfortunately you need 10 bananas to build the island towers, so we couldn't do that. I have a feeling that Ginger Island is going to be the reason why we failed some more goals that we had. Number 5 was to build the gold clock. I don't want to talk about this one. Goal number 6 was to complete all of the monster eradication goals. I was so confident that I had this finished near the end of fall. Like, like I was so convinced that I had everything done for this one that I completely forgot about it. That was a mistake, because of course I did not have it completed at the end of fall. I was missing one part of it, the magma sprites. You know, the enemies that spawn in the volcano dungeon on Ginger Island? I yeah, this whole thing went downhill as soon as we got to Ginger Island. Anyway, moving on to the next goal, reach maximum hearts with every villager. I don't think I mentioned this, but I'm not including Kent in this goal because he comes to Pelican Town in the second year, so we literally can't do anything about that. I basically had the Stardew Valley wiki open the entire time to make sure I didn't miss anybody's birthday and that I always had gifts that the villagers love. There were a few times when I was slightly worried about this one, but we did manage to achieve this goal. We reached maximum hearts with every villager. Is what I wish I could say, but I cannot. Because I forgot one villager. I forgot about Leo. Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't lying when I said Ginger Island ruined our chances of achieving most of our goals. So we, we failed this one. That sucks, but at the same time, I feel like getting max hearts with everyone else is still pretty good. Goal number 8 was to reach level 10 in every skill. There was no way we weren't achieving this one. Having fully upgraded tools and a tractor made this one very easy, so that was definitely the easiest goal we had. In fact, if I hadn't achieved this goal, I would not have uploaded this video. <laughs> goal number 9 was to find all of the star drops. We got this one done, thankfully. This one wasn't too bad. The main concern I had for this one was the star drop you get for completing the museum collection, but the skull caverns and being able to use the tractor to dig up the entire town made that a lot easier. Goal number 10 was to fully upgrade the house. Again, this was a bit of an easy one. I think the only way we could have failed this is if we just completely forgot about it. But we didn't, so that's another goal completed. Goal number 11 was to earn a total of 50 million gold. Yeah, I set the bar way too high for this one. 
If I focused on planting as many crops as I could and had sheds full of kegs to make wine the entire time, then we might have been able to do it. But I sort of went for aesthetic over production when I started decorating my farm and asking Robin to put buildings on it. We earned 15 million gold in total, which I think is still pretty good. So we did end up failing this challenge, but I'm fairly happy with the progress we made on this one. Our final goal was to use only Elliot's pencil as a weapon until we make it to the Skull Caverns. Yeah, this one was just a bit of a meme. It was simple to do because I was on the tractor the whole time. So in total, we completed six of our goals, and we also failed six of our goals. I could talk about how I feel about this, but I found a video that pretty much sums up exactly how I feel. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. So, after everything we have done, there is still one more question I feel I need to answer. How close did we get to achieving perfection during those 100 days? 60%. You know what, I think that's a pretty good result for playing 100 days. It goes without saying though that playing on easy mode is what made that result possible. There's probably people out there who could get to 70 or 80% or maybe even 90% if they played on easy mode too. This whole thing was a lot of fun. If you want to give it a go yourself, I will leave a link for the tractor mod and the automate mod in the description. I'll also link the item spawner mod I used so you can give yourself Elliot's pencil and the upgraded tools at the start. Also, I did adjust the settings of the tractor, so there should be a picture of those settings on the screen now. Alright, I have been talking for way too long at this point. I am going to not speak for the next few days, and uh... Yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.